Welcome back everybody. In case you missed it, a few minor adjustments to the league this year. First off, defending champion John Coyne, Gonzo. Second off, two new people. One's got a large head, the other's blue. Third off, we have 15 teams this year. Now you might say, 15, that's an odd number. No JP, it's fine. When you make 15 teams work, it can't be that hard. How am I supposed to make this schedule? Well, it's fine. Just a few minor adjustments. So, the regular season is going to be 15 weeks long. So we have 15 teams, um, which means everybody's going to play everybody once, and everybody's going to get one bye. So happened that the newbie gets a bye the first week. Just happened to work that way. It's going to be a real sprint to the finish here. Playoffs are going to be eight weeks long, like two months. Nine teams are going to make it, so that's over half the league. You can have a losing record and still make the playoffs. First two weeks of the playoffs is going to be the wild card round, nine versus eight. Then we'll proceed to 8v1, 7v2, 6v3, 5v4, and work our way down. I'm going to do the power rankings here for week one. JP and I have a plan to alternate. I've got some volunteers to do other weeks for me too. I'm still looking for two more volunteers to do one week of power rankings. That's all you have to do, just one week. It doesn't even have to be video power rankings. You can write them out if you want to, but really just trying to mix it up, trying to get power, power rankings out to you every week. First week's always ridiculously tough to do power rankings because according to my record last year, I don't know much about fast baseball anymore. Uh -oh. I would argue you know nothing. Scoring, everything is the same. Um, a couple orders of business. Um, last year we did a really A-plus job with league fees. Um, worked out pretty well, so well that the winner of the league last year decided to bail and just fall off the face of the earth with his prize money. Second place, pretty sure he bought me beer with his money, so I got the best of that one. Third place was so confident about his final standing in the league at the end of the playoff, he didn't even pay his league fee. But it worked out, because he didn't have to lose. Third place just got his money back anyway. Alright guys, we'll start at 15. Have to summon some inner cruelty here. Hate to do this, but I'm going to rank Cheeky Monkey at number 15. <sighs> I do this every year. Rank him low. Comes back high, so it's not going to matter. So I don't have to feel bad about ranking this low, because there's nowhere to go but up. Um, tough things here. Only got three starting pitchers, which is kind of a Greg thing anyway. Likes to bank on his relief pitching, but he doesn't even have the most relief pitching in his division. Um, he's going to rely heavily on Robinson Cano there at second base. Um, for all we know, maybe he'll have a great year at safe go. Probably will just because I said that. Um, Jason Kipnis in the utility spot, going to be pretty decent. Other than that, there's really not a whole lot that jumps out to you. Sorry, Greg. All right, number 14, Lee and Sabathia. Sorry, Z. Last year you won one game. In your defense, you had the most points scored against you out of any teams in the league. Um, also, clever strategy at drafting the same players so you don't have to change your team name. Noble. Also, great drafting strategy in drafting Matt Wieters so that Luke is forced to change his name. Touche, sir. <sighs> Altogether, though, it kind of looks like you'll have a team that summons the courage to squeeze one win out of your lineup. Um, only things that I'm worried about with this would be the only batter on your team projected to get 400 plus points is Jose Bautista, um, injury prone, yada yada. Uh, Cliff Lee, stable. Ryu with a great pick. Um, hopefully for you, CC will play well. I couldn't care less. And at number 13, we got level 33 Charizard. Um, interesting division this year, the good division. Um, currently has the 2007, 2008, and 2009 league champions in Reed, Greg, and Cam. Um, but at number 13, I put Cam because this is the only team in the league that has one hitter who's projected to average more than 2.4 points a day. Um, that's going to be a little tough to work around. Uh, you've got some pieces there that people would probably love to trade for. 
nice promotion, bro. Um, other than that, pitching's very interesting. Uh, Felix Hernandez and Gio are going to be relied on pretty heavily to provide those QSs. Um, other than that, you've got probably the best closer setup in the league, um, which you could get a million points from him one week and then the next. You just never know. It's kind of hard. But hey, Clay, Chris Archer, and um, Tim Linscombe could do something this year to Other than that, you've got some hitters that could come around. Matt Adams looks pretty good. Starling Castro, maybe. Mike Moustakis. Come on, man. Friends don't let friends draft Mike Moustakis. Mike Moustakis or bust. Number 12, lock and load. Um, honestly, I might be putting you down a little farther because you weren't at the draft. Like, you had better stuff to do. Thanks, man. Um, but... Your hitting actually looks really intriguing. Uh, Mauer, Phillips, Longoria, Hardy, Ellsbury, Carlos Gomez. Um, you even got uh, got a couple Red Sox on your roster this year. No, the draft gods giveth, the draft gods taketh away. But your pitching sucks, so you're 12. At number 11, we got Suck My Weeders. Um, actually, Luke, to be honest, I don't think I like your team as much as Franco's, but you were at the draft, so props, brother. Um, what is this, like the third year in a row you've drafted Buster Posey first overall? You've got three pitchers on your team who are looking to get you some quality starts this year. Just three. Does Bartolo Colon even count? What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm just kidding. Waddle on out to that mound one last time, big dog. Can't help but feel like I want you to make the playoffs really badly, but that's not going to happen with three bench players and three starting pitchers. And at number 10, we got the new guy, Artie. Uh, not sure if I should call you Elm College, but your team is scarily reminiscent of one that John would put together. Anyway, you've at least got more than three starting pitchers who are capable of getting quality starts. So step one, accomplished. Step two, you're kind of in the same boat as Luke Steele because you got a DL player on your roster. Um, except you get the benefit of the doubt because you probably don't know how to switch him to the DL list. Actually, Luke probably doesn't either. But some really good hitting here, actually. Uh, you got Fielder, Utley, Wright, Reyes, Bruce, uh, Elvis Andrus. Uh, Elvis Andrus. But Chase Utley, that's a John Coyne name right there. Somewhere the 2008 Jake Ford is crying. <laughs> little, 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 little. One thing you should know about us already is we're a rather distasteful and unsophisticated bunch. Nah, it's mostly just you. We start getting into playoff category at number 9, and at number 9 this year we got 50 Shades of Sunny Gray. Mm, gonna be a little sad not playing Stanton like my daddy every time I have to rank Joe. Um, or I should say get to rank Joe, because it's always so pleasant. Um, very similar team to what Artie has put together this year. Uh, very stable, well-rounded offense. Uh, Joey Votto, Ian Kinsler. I'm sure McCann will hit a trillion home runs in the Wolf Ballpark at Yankee Stadium. Um, John Lackey was draftable this year. That's a thing. Those points for team name, though, definitely something we all got to get on here. Myself included. Then I've got Black Hole to Nowhere at an interesting number eight. What the hell does that even mean? Well, there's a lot of different things that could happen with this team, I feel like. R.A. Dickey could rebound and have a phenomenal year. Um, his peripherals were pretty unlucky last year from what I read about. Uh, Verlander, obviously, Homer Bailey, Doug Fister comes back. He's got probably one of the best starting pitching lineups in the in the league. Um, Yasiel Puig, another question mark. Carlos Santana, um, maybe Brandon Moss will strike out a million times this year. And there's just a lot of questions, but definitely a team worthy of playing for a playoff spot. And then at seven, we got Saigon Door Gunners. Uh, obviously, two of the best hitters in the game with Miggy and Paul Goldschmidt. Stable is as stable does Matt Carpenter at second base. Um, still a little weary putting him down at seven. It'll make me look stupid with his wise beyond his years pickups as the year goes on or trades and probably go to show us all that all of his draft picks were superstars. So uh, Pat Node sits at seven right now. Uh, better hope Jose Fernandez doesn't have a sophomore slump. Other than that, Cole Hamels. DL, I think he's coming back soon though from what I remember. Um, 
Yeah, seven spot. So coming in at number six was the league leader in points four and wins last year in JP's team's new name, Ace Ventura. Um, probably would have been ranked a little higher if it weren't for all the unfortunate circumstances with Darvis Chapman and, uh, and Iwakuma. Um, it was one of two teams last year to get over 6,000 points. The other one was Greg. Looking stupider by the minute. Looks like he'll likely turn to Mike Trout and Adrian Beltre again for some serious offensive points, which shouldn't be a problem for them. Um, yeah. So, next up at number five, we have He, She, Me, Trumbo. Come on, SpongeBob, it's third grade. Um, a lot of things to say about this team. First off, love Michael Kadire. Last year's batting average in balls in play was a stellar 383. Dude, that's a bad thing. Well then I guess in that case we're going to have to give Albert Pujols and Edward Encarnacion the benefit of the doubt for having near career lows BABIPs last year. Um, on the other hand, McCutcheon had a slightly high one, but you really just got to ignore that because he's so fast that anything he hits in play he can outrun. Kane has some pitching too, recently acquired Zach Greinke, nice trade man. And then also Adam Wainwright, he's going to be the one pitcher everybody's going to want to have on their team this year, and he's going to make him look pretty good, so number five. So this leaves me to put Jake at number four. Uh, Cargo, Laser Show, Gonzo, Stanton like my daddy, uh, Josh Hamilton too, I think. Um, Jake's got a very potent offense. He lacks a little bit on the pitching side. Chris Sale and John Lester will probably give him pretty good numbers. Other than that, the depth doesn't really go too much further. Anybody notice how Brandon Beachy is projected to get negative one point this year? Didn't know we had a stack category for Tommy John surgery. Other than that, though, even the not-so-big names on his offensive lineup are pretty solid. Um, looks like he'll be able to sneak some saves out, too, so long as LaTroy Hawkins doesn't blow up. And then I've got Brendan Reed at three. Gonna admit, this is a little bit just because I love the kid so much. Um, he's got two relief pitchers in Holland and Jim Johnson, projected to get 40-plus saves, and then uh, basically five starters, including Scherzer and Price, who are probably going to get 20 quality starts. Um, so if Reed can summon the courage to improve his offense a little bit and prove me right by giving him this three ranking, he's going to be a top contender in the league this year. I know what you're thinking. There's no way he's going to put himself at number one. Wrong! Pete at number two. Uh, very arguably could be number one. Probably my favorite offensive lineup in the entire league right now. Um, Freddie Freeman, Ben Zobrist, two people that I wanted on my team, but he stole from me. It sucks drafting behind this kid. Uh, Matt Holliday, obviously. Um, two, he's got three, four pitchers just waiting to have career years. Uh, Strasburg, obviously, to Heron, Singrani. Um, other than that, he's got some relief pitching in the cellars. Also, great name, Salazar Slytherin. Yep. I did about four or five takes of that. Thanks. Hey, think in a couple weeks you can put a little more emphasis on team names included into your rankings? Yeah, probably. So I had a pretty bad year last year. In hindsight, picking Giovanni Gallardo was a terrible idea. After Mike Moustakis was pretty bad too. Floated my team, got three keepers. You know Kershaw, Bumgarner, and Shields are going to combine for at least like 75 quality starts. Other than that, I got seven hitters. We're gonna average two and a half or more per day. So you know what? Suck it! Got one and two going head to head in this week's uh, first week matchup in Ryan and Pete. Uh, with that being said, I'm gonna leave it to whoever does power rankings next week. Analyze maybe how that turns out and maybe how bad my rankings were. Looking at you, JP. Other than that, we need to get to some discussions about maybe league fees going soon. Last year's $20 fee seemed to work pretty well. Um, if you guys were thinking less, thinking more, just let me know. Um, it's going to be something we have to do a little quicker because the regular season is going to be such a sprint. Um, it's going to be July and it's going to be done, so uh, we're going to have to get on that as soon as possible. Other than that, I'm going to try and get to my volunteers about when they're going to be doing power rankings. Um, I'm under the assumption JP is going to do it next week.
If you guys have anything else on your mind, feel free to let me know. Welcome back.